Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. How are you? Not too bad. Anything you look for in particular? Uh, I'm just going to kind of look around. Huh? Awesome. you're looking for oh um yeah maybe something used maybe like a, a pcc or something something yeah. unique cool i got some options so all these guys here are kind of some pre-owned uh pccs i got a couple things chambered in like nine like the uh, stryborg um i've got the m11 i've got this badass keltec chambered in five seven by two eight i don't know if you ever shot that round but that thing is super fun yeah can i see that yeah absolutely that's cool do they use these in the army not this particular model but the, that round is used in the military that is cool what is that? Is that the same thing? Yeah, this a... just came in the other day. I'm not quite sure which one this is. I know it shoots the same round as that one. Looks like a Keltec. Yeah, it's something unique, kind of like what they do on their builds. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a Keltec. It says that. It's got some extra stickers and stuff on it, but huh? I like it. It's it's too expensive though. Like we can probably work on that price for you. Can I get it for like three hundred dollars? Yeah. Yeah. That okay. Should be, this should be an issue. Deal. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so this much. A, I'm excited for my new yeah. Keltec. What is the, there's a white and a red and then like a four. What does that I mean? I think it's just extra safeties. I think it's it's safe, extra safe, and then no safe. Oh, so that one fires? Yeah. Like this, is this like a safe fire? It's like fire. Off, off, on. Sweet, how many is this mag hold? Uh, I, I want at least like, five rounds. It should be at least five. So maybe it's 10 or something like that. Heck yeah, okay, well I guess we do paperwork and stuff. Uh, do you have your driver's license? Um, no. Oh, don't worry about it. Okay, yeah. sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Man, it's so easy to buy guns in Texas. <laughs> Sir, you forgot your 3,000 rounds. Oh my gosh. It comes with that gun. Wow. There you go, man. Have a good day. Thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. He's so nice. Uh, hey, Matt, you want to stop by the drive through or something for breakfast before we head back? Why would we do a drive through when we could just do a drive by? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every little girl dreams of someday having a perfect wedding day. And so does every little boy. Wait, no, no, the boys is different. The boys all dream about getting a freaking MP7. Folks, let me introduce to you the first MP7 full auto that a YouTuber has ever owned. Take that donut operator. I'm wearing his hat to say sorry because I know he really, he loves the MP7. It's his favorite gun. We freaking bought this thing though. We did do it through all the right channels. We made it in the intro. It might've looked like we bought it for very cheap. It's actually very expensive. These are super hard to actually own because in 1986, there was a full auto weapons ban. And so everything before that is grandfathered in, which is the other full autos I own. They're transferable full autos. This thing was made after 1986. It's a post 1986, which means that you can't just buy this like you can an old full auto gun. You have to have an FFL and an SOT, which we have. And then you also have to have what's called a law letter, which means that some law enforcement agency is interested in demoing this gun and I can own it as long as they have access to demo it. So this is how you own. I still can't believe we have this thing. It's super rare because they never made semi-auto for importation. They didn't import a lot of full auto, but we have a freaking actual HK MP7 A1. We've had it on the channel before, not this one, but Kevin Brittingham had one and he let us fire his uh, from Q. Because these are so rare and so hard to find, they're also super expensive, and that also makes it to where we couldn't really own one. But we found this one for about a third the price of a normal gun because it's broken and it's bad. I'll show you what's broken on it in a second. Let's walk through it though. This is this is a big day for me. Uh, it's crazy that we have this thing, but let me just show you for those who are unfamiliar with an MP7. It's a little subcompact machine gun, super tiny. Takes uh, 20 round mags or 30 round mags or 40 round mags, AKA 20 round mags, 29 round mags YouTube, and 29 round mags YouTube. Those are all YouTube legal. We have a extending stock. It is, has multi positions on it here. I think it looks best in the short extended configuration. We also have a fold down foregrip. We also have these sights which kind of work as pistol irons when they're folded down. But as you can see, they fold up and then you have rifle kind of irons, like a little ghost ring in the back and a post in the front. And we have a little adapter up here to actually be able to thread something on. Uh, it also came with the birdcage kind of flash hider that it had up front. It is ambi. On both sides, we have a selector for safe, fire, 
and full. We have our mag release here. It's on both sides as well. And then we have our bolt release and catch right there. It's on both sides as well. Burp. And that is the MP7. It shoots a teeny tiny little bullet, 4.6 by 30, which is what a lot of people say is not enough to take down a bad guy. But good thing about having a small fast rate of fire machine gun is you can hit it more than once. Didn't know that happened. Threw an EOTech on it. Don't need these anymore. And we have an AB suppressor, the Warthog. This is a 5.56 suppressor. And we're gonna throw an Olight. It's a brand new Olight on here. And actually, Olight is sponsoring this video. This is the Olight PL Turbo. This thing has a really good spot and spill for our beam. Goes out to 550 meters. And you can see it has sufficient floodlight around for situational awareness. It has a patented sliding block for maximum compatibility, so it'll work on tons of pistols and rifles and anything with a Glock or a 1913 rail. Rugged screw locking mechanism with excellent durability and stability. And one of the best things about Olight is their price point is always amazing. And the PL Turbo has a lifetime warranty. So what's broken on this thing? I don't think it's too bad but we're not gonna be able to shoot it until we get it fixed. Get this other pin out. But we bought this from our, our buddies over there. They showed us what was broken, and why they didn't want it anymore. This is our bolt carrier. That's our bolt, as you can see. This is a short stroke gas piston, and it hits right here. That is the face that it punches every time it's shot. Now, if you look very closely, that plate had a weld around it, and the weld is cracked. Now the plate is still on there, but it is cracked all the way around. You can see that little bitty crack in there. That is how our gun is broken. This is where it takes a bunch of impact. They said this gun has only had around 2,000 rounds through it. They said they shot all the rounds, so they know its history. And they said they shot uh, most of them suppressed. So they think the suppressor was making it hit extra hard and just crack that. So we're thinking if we can't get a replacement, which they had tried, with HK to get a replacement. So hey, HK, if you're watching this, I would love to get a new bolt carrier group because otherwise, uh, if y'all don't send it, these are like impossible to find. So we are going to be forced to get probably Brandon. Hey, Brandon Herrera, love you, man. We're gonna have to get Brandon and his guys to probably Dremel this out and then re-weld it to be stronger. So obviously the gun is just unsafe to fire. I mean, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. Would, yeah, I would agree. Wouldn't be responsible of us to, you know, fire a gun. A demo machine gun. Yeah. Yeah, brand new machine gun, full auto. You know, with a crack in such an important pivotal piece, it'd just be wrong of us to do it. Yeah, we should just do it. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and. What's the worst that could happen? HK doesn't send us new parts. HK, please. We really want this, but I'm. I actually don't know how to put this back together. Yeah, we're gonna fire it. Be careful here. You have to. Guide the, Get her all down in there. Yeah, the, these rails come up more. What is that hitting? This gun sucks. Let's get something else. <laughs> Check this out. You see it blinking, and it's daytime out here. That is pretty bright. Pretty impressive. Okay, um, we are going to sight it in, and we're just going to show it. We never really show sighting in because we don't sight in. When we do sight in, we don't show it because it's boring. But just in case, because you know, I don't know when this thing is going to explode if it is. Uh, so we'll get it on video. I'm going to go semi-auto and just hit straight in the center of the target. I'm gonna aim straight in the center. I don't see where it went. Where did it hit? I can't tell. Well, it jammed first shot. That's cool. Yeah, that was spent. It just didn't didn't eject the spent shell. Maybe we run it unsuppressed first. I don't know. It's not kicking anything out. We're not ejecting. Yeah. This is what happens when you buy discount rare machine guns. <laughs> it's not ejecting at all. We're gonna do uh, no suppressor now. Let's see what that does. No eject. Okay, let's try full auto. <laughs> All right, we're full auto. I assume it's not gonna eject. Yeah. All right, we have a broken MP7. Womp womp. Mm -hmm. We just thought we'd he'd tell us it's broken and we'd buy it and it would just work great. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because the conversation started with, yeah, it's kind of broken. And then we're surprised that it's not running. We're like, oh, why is it not running yeah. right? Dang it. <laughs> we just paid for a full auto MP7. We got a single shot yeah, MP7. A bolt action MP7. A bolt action MP7. That's more of an MP7 than Donut Operator has. So, yep. suck it. We have a slow-mo camera on so we can actually see. I want to see if this bolt comes back at all or if it's not coming back. So, 
We're just doing a little diagnostic with our slow mo camera over here. We watched the slow mo. It doesn't look to me, on the little screen at least, that it even budged, right? I mean, it, it doesn't seem to even try to be opening. So we're like, well, what is stopping our gas? from pushing our piston back and hitting our bolt to get everything to move. So we're looking at this little exploded, not exploded view, but I guess just our little, you know, diagram view. Our technical cutaway view, that's the word I'm looking for. Number two is our gas piston. So I was trying to figure out you know, where all that stuff is. It's really hard to see. We took the front off the gun, took the back off the gun. The way it works is our gas piston, basically the, what did they call it? The gas block has the gas piston in it and that, hits right there. That's all in here. So I'm thinking we'll remove this. It looks like it has an Allen head. We'll pull that out and see what that looks like. Maybe we just have a damaged gas piston or maybe our gas bore, which is what takes the gases from the barrel to our gas block. Maybe that is plugged. So normally a bullet flies down the barrel and some of that gas is vented up through the gas bore up into the piston, shoving the piston back and cycling our bolt. Something along that pathway is not working or our bolt is just blocked and it's it's getting hit, but maybe that's why it's cracked. It's getting hit, but it's not allowing it to fly back at all. But I don't know, it just feels weird when it goes off. So we're gonna try to figure out what is not working right. And we know nothing about it, so it's perfect. And they're super easy to find. Super easy to find information on. Did some digging, there's two little things here. Uh, we found out this one is a locking for this one. So we loosen this first, then the other one will unlock. That is how you actually adjust the gas block, but I'm gonna pull it out because we also have this little piece, which we think might have fallen out of the gun um, when it originally broke. I wanna see what this gas piston actually looks like. And I have no idea what I'm doing right now, so I just know it did seem like when I first started turning the piston that it was like all the way down, which maybe means closed gas. Let's see, let me count how many revolutions I do. For those watching, me pointing this barrel at my face, everything's open. The barrel is just a barrel. I can see straight through it right now. We have no parts, no guts in this gun. Yeah, it's, I can feel it's trying to come out. It's loose and just bouncing around in there. I don't know, four, six is pretty tiny. No, it's not for the... I know, but still, I bet that it's tiny. Got it. Hmm. That's not what I expected that to look like. I can see straight through the gas block now. Step into my laboratory, let me show you after uh, much deliberation what I think's happening. You can see what looks like this thing and it's facing this way. Uh, it's right there. It was this way in ours, so it was backwards. But it also shows something coming off of it before it actually hits our bolt carrier. And it looked like this, but you can see there's nothing, I mean, there's nothing holding this in. And if this thing is in there, it'll just fall right through the gun. So I, I don't think this is right, but I feel like these two things might have used to be hooked. I don't know. But either way, you can see this is our gas block here. Even if I put that in there, it stops right here and nothing will let it go further. It needs to come out the back. So right here, there's a space here. This bolt goes all the way up against that and then something has to come out and hit the bolt to throw it back every time. And nothing comes except a little poof of air, which is just dissipated through here. I think we need to figure out what is wrong with these pieces, probably get a new one. And all that does, is it'll make it cycle. It doesn't actually fix our broken, cracked bolt. So all in all, we have a pretty broken MP7, single shot only. I guess let's just go use it to its maximum potential as is. HK, please help us. We found this awesome video Watch, not here, not here, next, right here. That's it, one unit. They take the little gas piston rings off, that was it. It was the way it was in here, and then after looking at it, you can tell, this thing used to be hooked to this, so this was our whole piston. There's a little ring on there, and it totally is the right size of this. This is kind of rounded. This is kind of spooned out where that went in there and there's a little dot in the middle. This thing just snapped off. We need to fix the crack in our bolt carrier group and we need to fix this. So this thing will never cycle without this because there's nothing to actually hit our bolt carrier. Let's just put it together and, and, and run it as fast as, as it will run with single shot. <laughs> single shot, MP7. Take two. I'm gonna shoot a lighter target so I can figure out where this is going. Oh yeah, a little bit right. I just wanna see what it sounded like without ears and uh, those are super, 
They're not loud, but they're not quiet. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. You know what we should do? What? Um, we invite Wait. Kevin from Q over. Oh, yeah? All right, we tell him, bring the MP7, and then we take him to lunch, schmooze him a little bit after the shoot, you know? Wine and dine. Wine and dine. Yep. Emphasis on the wine. Definitely. And while he's not paying attention, open up his case, open up our case, get his parts into ours. He'll never know. He'll be like, oh, my MP7 broke. It's crazy. Full foolproof. Yeah. I don't think he even shoots it. This is a great idea. Yeah. All right. You know what this video really needs? A working MP7? Besides a working MP7? Is an epic montage. <laughs>a super successful first episode but you know this is something we knew we we're gonna have to work on this was not gonna be a turnkey operation out of the box which is why we got it for a steep discount so uh, HK uh, we'd love to work with you please help us please uh, we need a gas piston and a bolt carrier and I think this thing will work freaking money after that anyone else who has any connections with HK uh, let us know because we really don't know how to get these parts and we really, really want to make it happen. So Part one of Demo Ranch's HK MP7 full auto. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be so good. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Demolition Ranch. Let me know if you can be of assistance. I love you. And I'll really love you if you can help us. And I'll see you next time. Simple. There's only one rule in the demolition. You don't tell Mayor. Demo Ranch's journey to a full auto MP7. It's gonna be full of love, full of heartbreak, laughter, twists and turns, epicness. You're gonna cry. We're gonna cry. We're already crying. Still crying. Like happy tears or like sad tears? All of the above. It's gonna be awesome. Come in this. Fall, spring, summer. Hopefully before, before Christmas of next year. Christmas of next year. Tune in. <laughs>